I believe very strongly that creativity starts young. In fact, I would say that we're born with it innately. One of my first memories is performing in front of people. My family tells me that I would talk when I was a baby before I knew words, which is something that a lot of babies do, but they tell me, no, I had full-on lectures when I was a kid. Imagine TEDx babies in my living room. That's half of a time. That's half of a time. So what eventually started as entertaining my family in the household eventually graduated to um, entertaining the congregation, standing up in front of the congregation at church, and then eventually standing in the auditorium in front of my classmates, in front of teachers. And by the age of seven, I was a young orator. I was uh, going all around the city, getting paid to speak at different events, city hall, uh, political events. Uh, and it was really cool. By age seven, I won the citywide speech contest and had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. to speak on the steps of Congress. Listen, America, our government is in serious debt. We owe billions of dollars. Always remember, never underestimate the power of a pen. Now say yes to America's future today. Good. And what? where do you go to school and where are you from? I'm from Gary, Indiana. I go to school at, uh, at Banneker Elementary School. And are you having fun? Yes. <laughs> uh, adults would ask me all the time what I wanted to be when I got older, to which I would respond, the first black president of the United States of America. And they would go, oh, I'll vote for you. So thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it was really awesome uh, because that was definitely a phase of my life that I look back on very fondly. Uh, my childhood press run was ridiculous. If social media was around, I probably would have been on the Ellen Show at that time. Um, so soon after that, my family relocated to Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, I was starting to be over public speaking. After all, I had done it for the first 13 years of my life. I was ready for a career change. And this is something that I've noticed that a lot of creators do. For some reason, uh, we get bored with a talent or a skill. Sometimes we might move on from it. We might not think we're good enough. But I definitely want to challenge all of us to just continue whatever that skill is in some aspect because we never know how it can influence the next stage in our life. So I don't want to say skills steer us towards our purpose. Um, and just like Nashville is known as Music City, soon my career aspirations shifted towards music. I come from a musical family. My dad played saxophone. His father played trumpet before him. And uh, I picked up saxophone around middle school. And it came very natural to me because it's very similar to public speaking. So I could kind of already see how that was influence, influencing what I was doing next. Uh, instead of speaking through the microphone, this time I was speaking through the instrument. And uh, eventually that gravitated into me writing poetry. It was like a natural transition. Uh, I started writing poetry for girls that I had crushes on, which uh, I was only 4'11", so I needed a way to stand out, some kind of way. Um, and what I noticed next was that creative hobbies can also steer us towards career opportunities. After poetry, soon came rapping. I started rapping and freestyling with my friends at school, and I began to see a blending of all these skills around high school, um, from the public speaking to the poetry to the music. Around 11th grade, I started my first band with some friends. Our band was called Improv Lyrics in Life, Ill, I-L-L. -L. And we were dope. We were like Tribe Called Quest mixed with the roots, with the horn section. And we won the uh, talent show, the high school talent show, 11th and 12th grade, two years in a row, which was really cool for us. Uh, soon after that, I started another band called Biscuits and Gravy. And this was the band that really took off. We were a hometown favorite. People really enjoyed us. And uh, we soon had newspaper write-ups, write toured regionally, and I'll show you a clip from our first televised performance. I beat a microphone ripper. Stumble on the words, what words I'm the flipper. Exercise it, call it whatever, it don't matter what I say. I'll be up on the microphone, I'm ready to play. It don't matter. 
Yeah, so that's just a quick clip from BAG, which is what we used to call ourselves for short. So shortly after this, I graduated from high school and uh, I went to college, which college was something that was instilled in me from a young age, something that I was going to do. And thankfully, my mom pressed it. I only wanted to do music, but she insisted, definitely do something that you can fall back on as well, just in case, which was genius, because little did I know how important having a degree would be later in my career. So I went to Belmont University for a music business program and ended up graduating with a Bachelor of Business Administration. Um, and along the way, one of the uh, things that stood out to me in college was in about 2008, I went to a college job fair and there was a gentleman that was sitting at one of the desks and he says, hey, do you rap? Which, if you look at me, you could definitely see that, you know, I obviously looked like I rap. I had the high top fade, I had a chain, I had the members only jacket. And he was correct. So we got into a conversation about an organization that he worked with called Southern Word. Southern Word is really cool because it shows elementary through high school students how to write spoken word poetry, which it definitely got the wheels turning in my head because this was the very first time that I thought about being in a position to give back from my creative skill set to the next generation. And, uh, you know, it was amazing because I credit Ben with teaching me how to create engaging lesson plans from my creative journey. Uh, because really, the classroom is the stage. Imagine walking into a classroom of 15 to 30 high school students that are just looking at me like, who is this guy? He's got a high top, what is he about to do? And then trying to catch their attention as quickly as possible. And then the next challenge was seeing if I could keep it for the next hour, for two hours, for a three hour workshop. And teaching is amazing because actually what I've learned is that teaching others helped me learn. As I was creating these lesson plans, I learned to sharpen up my own skills and also to reflect on where I was in an artist, as an artist and what I still wanted to accomplish. So, and it was really cool to see youth that were in the same position that I was in middle school that maybe wanted to pursue creative writing that uh, never really had an opportunity to express that in a classroom setting before. And then there were also students who never really had the opportunity to discover their own creativity and programs like Southern Word provided those opportunities to really spark that potential. So that was an amazing program. And shortly after this, I graduated college and it was a rude awakening because for the first time in my life, I wasn't a full-time student, which is something that a lot of artists have to navigate, young creatives, how do we make a living off of our talents, off of our skills. Um, I had amassed, thankfully, a big resume at this time as an artist, had toured, had performed, had, had almost millions of streams on my songs online, but that still wasn't enough money to just simply pay rent, to simply get groceries for the week or have a car note. So uh, if you had have told me, you know, going into college that I was going to have this issue, I would not have believed you at all. So that's when I hit up my friend Benjamin Smith from Southern Word and asked if he still had a position for me to be a teaching artist. And sure enough, he did. And that was amazing because I learned at that time not to burn my bridges. You never know when you're going to need to reach out to another colleague or to a former employer to help you through a hard time or just for advice. And really, I learned to just be open to the possibilities of my skill set. Because if you had told me going into college that by the time I graduated, I would be a teaching artist, I would have laughed at you. I would have said, I'm going to be a rapper, whatever. But the second that I opened my possibilities to uh, the differences that could happen as my skill set was rapping and singing and producing, I saw more things fall into line. For example, after that, there was a, a youth center called Rocket Town in Nashville where I used to hang out at when I was in high school. And the director was actually keeping up with me online and he noticed that I was still making music, still producing, still teaching. So he reached out to me to run their youth music studio, which is an opportunity I never thought about. But it was amazing because these are youth who were coming to the center after school and were learning to produce, write music, perform, etc. And I was able to be there to help nurture that talent. And I also started an open mic with them to be able to perform their songs that they created during the day so they could perform for the community and sharpen their skills. So this is one of the things that we created with the youth at the Rhyme Lab, which is the name of the studio. My God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of Genesis, before we play Sega. This who we are. This, 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 this who we are. I try hard with 
grasses But homeboy was never smart Stay writing songs in my classes Man, girls call me slow What? Slower than molasses Cause I always got caught Boy, I was always slacking uh, Stay writing songs in my off So yeah, that's the young rapper Justice Peace, actually And Justice Peace was really cool Because he was about 16 years old at that time And has continued uh, to produce and to rap as well um, so shortly after this time, I kind of figured that I had done all of what I wanted to accomplish in Nashville, Tennessee, so I relocated to New York City. And I'm a person who believes in ask and receive, the power of manifestation, but little did I know how living in such a densely populated area, how fast things can happen sometimes. So quickly, I got plugged in with a really cool network of artists, of creatives, uh, continued to perform more, and uh, set up a really good fan base. And I also started competing in freestyle rap battles and winning some, which was amazing to me because that was a skill that I had started when I was about eighth or ninth grade. So to see that still come into play in my career was definitely a blessing. Um, and also, I continued work with nonprofit and teaching organizations. One of them is one called Building Beats. Building Beats is amazing because it's an organization started by a DJ that also majored in technology, and he teaches youth leadership skills through DJing and music production technology. So I've had the pleasure of teaching workshops with them uh, to high school students. And also we've taken some trips to France to teach freestyle rap to the French military, which is something I would have never saw myself doing. And it's definitely a highlight of my career. Another organization I've worked with is called Dream Yard. Dream Yard is a nonprofit that works exclusively in the Bronx teaching all of the arts. Uh, in schools and in after school settings. And Dream Yard is amazing. Currently I teach uh, at six schools with them, music production and some poetry classes. And uh, one of the middle school poetry classes went on to reach second place in the Bronx Rights Poetry Slam, which is really awesome and cool to see uh, that they still keep that skill and that art form alive in the schools. So uh, where do I go from there? After doing, starting with the public speaking, uh, navigating my way through music, poetry, spoken word, performing, teaching, uh, I really had to reflect on where I've been to see where I'm going next. And for me, I feel like I've developed a unique perspective in the creative field, also in the education field. So I set the next goal of starting a youth organization. And that is called Level Up Showcase. Level Up Showcase is really cool because it's a monthly music show where youth artists, singers, poets, rappers, and producers can perform and level up their skills by performing on shows with veteran artists, which creates a mentorship opportunity for youth to be able to see artists that are where they're at. And it also allows the veterans to literally reach back to help out and mentor the younger artists. Uh, Level Up Showcase also employs youth interns. So we have a youth host a youth DJ, a youth band, youth videographers, photographers, stagehands, people who do the sound for the event, the engineers. And this helps them get job experience, internship credit, build their resumes. They're able to use this for colleges or future careers. And it's been awesome because we're actually going to celebrate our one year anniversary next Saturday in New York City. And we've been blessed to receive a, a grant from Open Call. It's from an organization called The Shed which is the newest cultural center in New York City. And uh, thankfully, after that grant, we've uh, had over about 70 youth in the, in the year perform and help out at the show. So I'll show you a clip from the show, and it's actually a rapper that I've competed in battle competitions with. His name is King Triple, and his daughter performed at Level Up Showcase with him. So this is basically what the showcase is all about. Awesome. So yeah, um, that's my journey from the stage to the classroom and back again to the stage and to the classroom because it's definitely all come full circle time and time again. So what I want to leave you with is your creative journey is an inspiration. Uh, everyone's story is different. 
Uh, if you had have told me that I would be where I am now, I probably would not have believed you. And I'm really excited to see where the next 30 years take me. Uh, everyone's journey is different, and at any point in your career, your creative journey speaks to someone else's. Your unique path can speak to where someone else is at. I've learned that comparison kills. So then I, I've sometimes made the mistake of comparing how far I've come, my accomplishments, my failures, my success, to other people, when really it's not about that. Because the future of creativity begins with your story. Thank you.